we are live now welcome everybody for those of you who are new we do this every thursday every other thursday and we take your immigration questions and try to answer them uh, rajiv ji is our immigration lawyer and yeah i think that's a quick little intro <laughs> while people join rajiv ji welcome back thank you yudi how does it feel to be back from vacation it feels good i had my interview green card interview on thursday oh yeah uh, on tuesday i mean it was good did they do did they, they do a joint or a separate interview joint joint um yeah so that's always a good sign yeah yeah it was good and then also they um, they sent me rfe already <laughs> for what my, were you missing medicals yeah because uh, it's past 2 years and i need to submit my um so we did ask them like uh, well like we submitted last time and they said even if you submit it they can't do anything about it you, you still need to submit it again your your relationship with with this show is the same as that uh, hair transplant hair restoration guy i am not only the president <laughs> i am also a patient <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah uh so yeah hopefully we can send them that uh, so how so they send me the R, uh, the my status says rfe and then i think one i485 says the interview is conducted but the case must be reviewed yeah um, so basically they must have given you what 10 days or 30 days 87 days that's a lot of time normally they should only give like 10 days for this kind of an rfe or maybe 30 at the most they like but that's okay the sooner you get case. it hi <laughs> hi the sooner you get it over to them uh, you dear i hate to tell you this but if you went by faces <laughs> you would be in deportation <laughs> uh yeah they probably you would go there you yeah. would be in deportation i would be at rikers doing hard but time. then then i wouldn't have such a beautiful wife so Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think you did one of those magic thingies from Gujarat. I did, I did. I'm from Mumbai, but I have some Gujarat qualities. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, hey, Mumbai, Gujarat, close. Yeah. Take a couple yeah. of steps, you're in Gujarat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they gave us uh, about eighty-five days or eighty-seven days, and yeah, we will. will submit them i i already did it last week but unfortunately i have to go to auburn which is 2 hours from chico there's no close um the doctors who are close they don't have appointments and yeah, yeah. so we are like okay we'll just that's okay it's a one time deal hopefully yeah. you never have to look at that again ever yeah i hope so and i hope i get it for 10 years not 2 years so they were okay with the other documentation that you and i were talking about Yeah yeah they didn't they did not even bring up um, yeah they did ask Yeah I didn't think so they did I didn't ask. think so because under Biden things have gotten a lot lot better than they used to be Yeah they did ask but um, he like he was writing down stuff on the form and I was like oh no I know this is where this is going to go but he he was super super nice so it was it was good Actually most of them are I am I have not met very many. there was one woman who was really really nasty that i remember i don't usually go for interviews yeah i've gone to maybe five interviews in my entire 30 years career mm. but each time i went there was a reason for it and in any case this woman was super nasty to me but she was super nice to my client so i was like oh, i don't care <laughs> <laughs> i i have a day job i don't have to work with you yeah. as long as you give, give my give my case approval that's right. all i care about Yep, yep. So she kept snapping at me, and I was like, "Okay, lady, you got a problem. I don't. I have no issue. I'm gonna go home, drink a cup of coffee, celebrate right. for my client." Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was a nice uh, intro to this. Uh, we have good amount of people. A lot of questions already coming in, so we will start with Karan's question. Is there a second H one B lottery expected this year? Yes. Probably. Uh, july or august probably july i think but we'll see they received a lot many more h1s this year than they did last year mm. i think there was a factor of like 30% more but uh, we'll see how it goes okay yeah 
Okay, next one is uh, hope you are doing well. Can you please suggest me? Yeah. Should uh, suppose I get F1 visa for one university. Oh, suppose I get F1 visa for one university but plan to go in another university before arrival. Is that okay? I, I have heard conflicting thoughts, opinions on this. Hmm. If you ask your school and I do recommend you ask your school they'll probably tell you it's okay to travel with that visa for another university if you call the consulate they'll say no it's not the mm. consulate tells you come in for another visa so what should you do see if there is a frequently asked question on ice website and cbp website don't worry about what the consulate says mm. Mm. because ice which is sevip should have sevip service people who manage service the database yeah yeah they should have some information on this and so should customs and border protection don't worry about the consulate mm. yeah okay uh next one is lawyer had filed my lawyer had filed h1b petition in last week of may how long could it take to get the receipt notice to track my case lawyer mentioned it takes two weeks but nothing as of yet that seems weird. Well, if it's non-premium, it could easily take a month. To even get the receipt? Yeah. Oh. If it's premium, it'll be a couple of days. It'll be easier to track the filing fee and cashment. Because if I remember correctly, uh, USCIS has to cash the checks within three business days. So if you call the bank, if your employer calls the bank, they will know if the checks have been cashed. Hmm. Hmm. okay next one is uh can i get my green card through marriage while i'm on f1 visa absolutely yeah okay rajiv ji is there any positive de developments on eagle act these acts i don't even bother to look at them until they get somewhere because right now the problem is the Senate is not going to move on any of these. Even if you get approval from the House, the Senate is not going to go anywhere. Yeah. They're going to have to come up with a comprehensive immigration reform. I hope they are able to do it piecemeal, but I don't think so. So mm. the answer is no movement, no idea what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Rohit is asking, so does having four employers in background a problem while employing STEM while applying STEM OPT extension. Also, I had last day as Sunday in one of my employer show. What should be the point of worry? Okay, well, first of all, when you say multiple employers in your background, during the first year of OPT, you can have 40 employers. We don't care. As long as you are doing your 20 hours per week, whether you are doing serially or consecutively or concurrently, we don't really care about that. Once you get into STEM OPT, you need approval for every employer. Mm. You can't just willy nilly pick and choose. So therefore, you are not numerically bound to any number. Before, in the first year OPT, you're not bound to any particular approvals either. You can go work for anybody you choose as long as it is in your major area of study. But when you get into STEM OPT, you need prior approvals before you can start working with an employer. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Siddharth is saying, I heard OPT students can go back to US starting July. To be clear, mm. my STEM OPT had started in 2020. I came back to India, but now I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. The answer is yes, you can. I had a... I had an email from a student who said, my first year OPT is expiring. He said July 7th, I think, on July 7th. Mm. Can I return on July 2nd? Because I'm going to apply for a STEM OPT extension as soon as I land. And I said, in my opinion, you can. Just make sure you talk with your school, have everything all lined up and carry some proof that you have a STEM OPT extension available as well as some proof that you've been working for the OPT as required 
you should be able to make it back in as long as you have a visa mm. Mm. uh can you guys make a video on o1 visa just like you did for green cards okay okay sure and... so we will uh my opt is denied what are my other options my opt is denied what are my other options well, i don't know what you mean by options to work or to stay in the united states probably because to stay. work yeah yeah work your options are uh, severely limited to probably cpt if you can go back to school and the school allows you to do cpt on my blog on immigration.com i have a complete write up on cpt so if you go take a look at that it should give you a good comparison of the difference between cpt and opt as well as how cpt works as well as day one cpt mm-hmm. okay next one is we saw a big jump in f4 india category what's your future prediction on f4 india category i do not have any prediction sir i listen to charlie oppenheim just like you all do Mm-hmm. so they are the people who are in charge of statistical projections visa allocation follows certain complex rules one of them is based upon a statistical projection another one is what percentage of the total quota you can issue in any one trimester uh in addition to that there is also a ceiling on first three uh trimesters as opposed to the last quarter something like that there's a whole bunch of rules so uh, i i have no prediction i'm so sorry i need uh, a different profession astrology <laughs> uh next one is couple questions on i130 i130 petition for alien relative us is filed we have applied for citizen filing for a brother or a sister 10 mm-hmm. years ago how can i track it how much time does it take well there are whenever you talk about processing times you are looking well when we talk about waiting times you're looking at two things you are looking at the visa bulletin which tells you what dates are being processed currently so keep track of the visa bulletin which comes out every month mm-hmm. it keeps a progression of dates track your date from there once the date start showing current then the processing time kicks in how long does it take for the government to process your case so that could be a few months too and if the date slip back then you are waiting again mm-hmm. so keep track of two times one is the visa bulletin which is the more lengthy one once the dates start becoming current you can then start tracking the processing times mm okay and another i130 question was how can i prove my non immigrant intent on f1 visa interview while i130 pe- petition is pending <laughs> i give an example of my nephew every time we talk yeah uh his green card was pending and uh, his dad and he called me we did a skype thing in those days we used to have skype that was just last <laughs> year actually uh, before people started talking about zoom everything and zoom this <laughs> we talked and i said listen it's f1 visa is really about two things one is sad which is not in your control basically it is the mood of the consular officer mm. hopefully they are not that unreasonable we can hope and the second is how do you come across do you look like a student are you acting like a student have you been working or studying like a student so if you have throughout your career d's uh, and you know really low grades and you've been studying in in not the best schools and now you claim that you're going to go to to usa to study for for education purposes already you have a mark against you i think mm-hmm. and then on top of that you get admission into a school that is not close to even being the top or may, maybe not even accredited school you could have a problem so two two portions of it one which is under your control be a good student and two which is not in your control hope for the best as far as the consular officer is concerned yeah. so my my nephew got his his uh student visa even though his green card was pending mm. okay a lot of question on the vaccine uh, i am an f1 visa student i'll be coming to usa in this august if i did not 
have vaccine can we get vaccine in usa and what happens if i already if i take co vaccine which is not approved okay so guys this is this has nothing to do with immigration so i'm going to have to pass on that i would suggest you go to the center for disease control website cdc.gov also go to cbp.gov because custom customs and border protection cbp.gov follows the guidelines of the cdc mm. whatever cdc says cbp does so just follow these two they are the important ones to watch yeah um yeah. i'm going to skip all the vaccination yeah i i'm my brothers are doctors not me <laughs> uh go vaccine wow okay here we go uh, i'm on l1b visa and doing online masters from arizona state university will i be eligible for h1b masters quota next year if the university is non profit i don't think it is if the university is non profit but if it's if it's the state university then you you should qualify So if it's non-profit and accredited, you would qualify for master's degree quota. But if the university is not accredited or it is for profit, you that master's degree doesn't count. Mm. Not for H one B. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Um, do you foresee five thirty i five thirty nine processing time to reduce as compared to last year? <laughs> I hope so. Uh, I had a, I had a very odd question this morning. Mm. at an email from a community member who said this why are they taking so long to process h4 and h4 ead how do i answer that question that was the only question why are they taking so long i said because they have too much work i mean <laughs> yeah it's a difficult question to answer yeah this is a little easier do you think it's going to get better we hope so yeah because what happens is many times problems continue to exist when they are not paid attention to but once the government starts paying attention or it's brought to their attention forcefully things tend, tend to happen for the good like i'll give you an example the policy that they announced last week they are going to issue i485 eads not students i485 eads for 2 years oh, yeah. instead of 1 year that reduces their workload mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay So hopefully they are putting into place long term effective measures that result in better government than we have now. Mm. I hope that it gets better. How soon I don't know. Roll the dice. <laughs> we have Before that. Before Trump goes to prison. By the way, I do get a lot of hate email from Trump supporters. Thank you and you. <laughs> oh boy. Haters. Uh, yeah. Next question is U.S. citizen, U.S. citizen, non-citizen parents of U.S. citizen who is under age of twenty-one years can travel, right? Even while transis transiting, say Dubai. It was a little confusing. Okay, let me let me show you what the rule is. Now, please double check this on, on uh, it should it should be on my blog, as well as on it's all over the web. is the age under 18 or under 21 just double check that i think it's under 18 so the way this works is if you have a us citizen or green card holding sibling brother or sister who's a minor you can come in if you are the parent or guardian of a us citizen or green card holder who's a minor you can come in mm. okay so if you have a brother who's more than 18 or 21 you can't you, that doesn't help you if your son or daughter is a us citizen or green card holder and they are 21 that doesn't help mom and dad yeah okay next one is uh was my f1 visa expires uh, in march 2022 how however uh it is before my graduation which is 2024 what should i do could i re-enter usa with mm-hmm. an expired visa no no don't confuse visa with legal stay 
visa is a permission to show up at the airport so from india or brazil or china wherever you're coming from flying from there to the us airport let's say laguardia is visa at the airport you are given legal stay now visa doesn't matter visa could be expiring tomorrow you showed up today and they gave you 6 months stay on a tourist visa that's fine because you only need a visa to land at the airport mm. okay now using the same logic once you have entered the united states even if your student visa expires as long as you are maintaining your status there's no problem but then your when i94 you... should not say expires on july 1st 2021 then you have a problem if you look at the students i94s most of them say date of expiration ds duration of status so people with a ds i94 don't need to worry even if their visa expires when they travel out they have to get a visa but as long they are as long as they are in the united states a visa is not needed hmm so so if he does go back to india and come back he needs to renew it right so he needs there's no renewal you have to apply for a new visa oh okay yeah it's a renewal is a misnomer although it might be just a technicality really you are asking for an extension on the same basis but it's still it's a new visa hmm okay all right okay um hey yuri i have applied for b1 b2 visa couple times but still my family got rejected why all the documents are genuine because the consular officer thought you don't do, you don't deserve a visa not much we can do about that b1 b2 is a very difficult to overcome especially yeah. when the denial is a 214b denial which basically means hey you guys are going to go and stay there illegally that's a judgment call not even the courts can do anything about it. is o1 visa only for artist and indus entertainment industry no there are o1 a's o1 b's and therefore if i remember correctly science education business arts i'm sure i'm missing one thing more so basically but the interesting thing is the definitions of these fields are so vast so for example if you are a chef you could be classified as an artist but if you own a restaurant you could be classified as a businessman so there are so many different ways to approach this pretty much everybody who is good at what they do very very good at what they do is covered mm. yeah but i it's a super lengthy documentation no. process no but, uh, there's a lot of documentation involved but o1 can be premium processed oh, okay okay we are right now going to process some o1as for cricketers we did some uh, EB1 A's extraordinary ability alien for for athletes including cricketers golfers this cricketers year cricketers in a... United States like they play yeah. leagues in United States yeah it's it's coming on big uh, one right. of our clients owns a couple of these leagues oh wow that's interesting oh. yeah yeah he's uh, he's got a thousand employee company in India and a few hundred employee company here and we've known him for decades when he was still a student so oh. at one point or another we've been working with them um, on on their green cards and h1b's and now they're now that he he doesn't need to work so he's he's himself a cricketer a very good cricketer mm. Mm. so he that's his that's his baby that's what he likes to do yeah okay next one is my f1 visa was rejected because of my toefl score is not valid exam center had cancelled because of mm. of this my f1 got rejected 10 years back now my profile Big got problem. picked in h1b visa will i see any will i get any problem i the only thing i would worry about is did they hold you to any kind of misrepresentation or fraud which will typically i think it'll say 212a denial but if you if you don't have any kind of fraud or anything the fact that you got denied for lack of documentation is zero issue h1b cannot be stopped for that mm. yeah okay a good one that was a good question um 
I'm planning to come to USA for fall 2021. I got my visa. Can I fly to USA by having a layover in London? You don't, uh, well, the problem is you might be exempt under Indian rules, but then you'd be subject to the ban which exists in against UK. So if you touch in another country, you will then be infected by their ban. Oh. Okay. So we don't know what their ban is. I was looking at, we are trying to get somebody in from UK right now. And I was looking at the US website in UK. They don't even call it national interest exception. They call it national interest consideration. Mm. So I'm not sure whether you want to really go into UK. I would fly straight to US safe hour. Mm. Yeah. Time for tourism will be another, unless the queen is waiting for you, then it's different. <laughs> Can't wait, Her Majesty. You know, can't yeah, have her wait. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Ganesh is asking: Is concurrent filing of N four hundred while I seven fifty one pending allowed? My removal yeah. of condition. Yeah, yeah, it is. I know what it is. So basically, married conditional removing condition. Five years have gone by, or three years have gone by. I want to start naturalization. Yeah, it is allowed. I'm pretty sure it is. You can double check. On the USCIS website, they have it under the N-400 processing. Mm. I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah. Um, yeah, his following question was what you said. So, <laughs> See, you can read minds. So you can start the astrology business. I've been doing it for 30 years. <laughs> I can't think of any question I haven't answered. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Okay, uh, da, da, da. I have applied for OPD STEM extension online. Is it, it is processing at the Potomac Surve Service Center. What if it didn't get approved till my OPD end date, which is 6th of July, 2021? Yeah, but you can continue working for up to 180 days, right? Yes, I think so. Is that for even OPD? I know for H1B it is. Well, when no, no. somebody has, a, when they have applied for STEM OPT extension, they can continue working. Right. Even for green card EAD was something you told me to. Green card EAD also the same rule. Yeah. The only messed up one is the H4 EAD. Mm. Okay. So in H4 EAD, you cannot? Okay. You get Got to it. stay home and watch TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vinay is asking, I have read conflicting opinions on whether people should go for day one CPD universities. Some say it's a strict no-no. Some say it's read my Read my blog entry. <laughs> what I did was I covered both situations. So first I wrote a complete article about CPT. Then I said, is CPT a good substitute for H1B? And when you click on that, there's only a paragraph that tells you these are the worst case scenario. So what? Mm. Take a look at what I've written. And if you have questions, you can post them on the blog itself okay next one shushmita is asking uh yudi please ask after i-140 approval do we need to be with a uh, employer in us or with the same employer in any country in order to revoke in order to revoke in that order, question doesn't make sense in, order in order not to revoke sorry that was my mistake okay well revocation is an act of the employer if the employer doesn't wish to revoke, they don't have to. I-140s do not need to be revoked. Okay. I have answered this question at least 500 times uh, since 2017, maybe more, but I'll answer it one more time because obviously it's not still clear to a lot of people. On January 17th, 2017, the rules changed. Mm. Before January 17th, 2017, the government was very confused. Hmm. If your I-140 was revoked before January 17, 2017, it is doubtful that you can even carry forward your priority date. But since January 17, 2017, the rule is this. If your prior filed I-140 approval stayed approved even for one day on January 17, 2017, you will carry your priority date even if the I-140 is revoked. What if it was filed in 2018 and approved in 2018? Well, that's past January 2017. So you are now covered by the new rules. 
So under the new rules, which most of you would be covered under, if your I-140 gets approved, the priority date is yours to keep, even if the I-140 is revoked. Mm -hmm. yeah. That that rule is very clear. Second rule that is also clear: if the I-140 is approved and it stays approved for 180 days, on the 181st day the employer revokes it. Not only do you carry your priority date, which you already would. You also have the right to keep extending H one beyond six years with any employer. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, how long do we have to be employed? Not even not even one day. Mm -hmm. You could leave even when the I one forty is pending. If it gets approved, the priority date is yours. If it stays approved for one eighty days, right to extend H one is yours, and your wife or your husband's right to extend H four EAD is also carried forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next one is uh, I am in Canada. Can I request emergency appointment for H one B stamping based on financial hardship? Okay. Before you do anything else, look at um, I have posted a actually Deepa did. I sent her an article on uh, the current state of affairs. This is mostly focused towards Indian people applying in India because that's where we were getting the most questions. But you will see some useful links there. See if you fall, fall under one of the 16 sectors, um, because even though for emergency visas, it should not be relevant whether you class whether you qualify for national interest exception. But those same things carry over. So, for example, we have a client in the Midwest who is doing a lot of personal protection equipment. A personal protective equi equipment manufacturer for the government. Mm. They're a big industrial company, big industry. Um, for their people, getting visas would not be difficult because they are directly involved in the COVID-19 effort. So look at the exceptions and the way I look at it. As long as you don't misrepresent, what is the harm in trying? Give it a shot. Mm. Yeah. Um, okay, next one is, uh, is there any negative impact if I of filing DS-160 more than once? I don't know what that means. You are paying a fee, right? Every time you file DS-160. So yeah, I'm guessing uh, they, they filled up a DS. Mm, this is my assumption that they filled up DS-160, maybe miss, messed up something. They forgot. Or expired and then they have to redo it before even here's they what booked you do. Here's point. what you do. Mm -hmm. Google DS-160 example. When you Google that, it brings you to the State Department web page on DS-160. There are frequently asked questions that tell you what to do in every situation. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. If I but, made a mistake, how should I correct it? What do I do? Things like that. Okay, Pratyush is asking, my dad L1 visa extension was denied. Will it affect my F1 visa next year? It shouldn't. Okay, uh, if some, if I somehow manage to get a government job in USA and the company files for PR, will it help me to get green card early? No, first of all, I looked into it. There was a time when I was still on student visa when one of the government agencies offered me a job mm. and that agency is actually exempt from most government requirements and they also pay 35% more than the regular government salaries. They asked me to do the research, can they hire me while I'm still on F1, they could even do an H1 for me. I figured out unless you are a citizen of a NATO country, the government can hire you but they can't pay you. Mm, interesting. Okay? So that's the last time I checked. What is happening is every year when the budget, national budget is passed, there is a line in it. There's a line item that says you can't pay anybody out of the government fisc unless they are a citizen of NATO. Something like that. So they can hire you, they can't pay you. Hmm. And by the way, hiring people without paying them is a violation of Fair Labor Standards Act. Yeah. So net result is you can't work for the government. Now, can you be a contractor where your employer has a contract with the government? That happens all the time. Does that give you a leg up on getting a green card? No, but it
but there is a green card format for national interest waivers oh, yeah. where for example we used to do green cards for the department of defense and there you have to get a recommendation from the officer who is high enough to speak for the whole agency mm. i believe for uh, um for department of the army it was the secretary of the department of army or something like that for defense it was the under secretary of the department of defense so you actually have to go very high up to get a recommendation your boss could be a five star general and that's not good enough <laughs> yeah rohan just donated 5 dollar to us how do you want to split it rajiv ji i don't want any money <laughs> <laughs> thank you rohan <laughs> you didn't have to do that rohan yeah <clears throat> uh next one is uh, do, 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 do. that was a good one um can i be on my dad's eb3 petition while i'm on f1 opd h1 oh, yeah. until the age of absolutely yeah uh, that's the problem if you are under 21 your status doesn't matter you can inherit the green card even if you are not on his dependent non immigrant visa So if he's on H one, you don't have to be H four to get the green card. You can be F one to get the green card. And that reminds me the question which I read. Uh, there was question: Does H four EAD has to? Oh yeah, can a spouse on H four uh, work on any field other than his yeah. partner? Yeah, that's the weird thing. H one B has much fewer rights than the H four EAD. <laughs> that's so weird start, yeah yeah they can start their own business they can work on three jobs they can choose not to work um and my <laughs> my recommendation is just sit back relax watch a good tv show go for a walk take the dog out have a good life <laughs> uh, you are allowed to do that you can you can choose not to work h1b cannot h1b stops working everybody's out of status i i just that's so weird because H one B is restricted that you have to work under the field you studied or etc. And H four can basically go to Costco and work there if they want to. Why would oh maybe the free samples? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> there might be a tech department. Uh, oh, they have actually. I know somebody who works there. Yeah, I love Costco. You like Costco? Yeah, but the problem is I have to only like buy one thing and it lasts <laughs> me six months. <laughs> yeah, true. Except their oh, frozen yeah. cherries; those I go through like three pounds in two days. Do you like make smoothie or do you eat them? No, no, I just eat them. You should try their organic cherries; very good. Mm. Okay. Frozen organic cherries—they are the bomb, man. <laughs> I don't have any stock in Costco. I don't even know they're publicly traded. Oh, they are publicly traded. <laughs> they are. They are. They are. They also I have are, zero are, stock. Nor am I interested in stock. I have no idea how stocks work. All a mystery to me. It's basically people betting on you, saying if you start, if you trade your company well, publicly. I have people who do it for me. I just don't know what they do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, do do do. Next one is. Uh, <clears throat> I'm in India. My employer applied for H-1B, and I got selected in lottery fiscal 2022. But I'm okay. having 1.5 year experience and bachelor's degree. So, is there any chance of rejection with less experience? No. Why? Why? As long as see, the preoccupation or the obsession of an H-1B is your degree, not your experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If your degree fails the test, then they go to the experience. If you have a four-year degree in a particular field, chemical engineer, and you get a job as a chemical engineer or a process engineer or a design engineer, you're fine. But if you have a degree in mechanical engineering and you're doing software programming, which has nothing to do with, I mean, if you're doing control systems, that's different, or mechatronics, that's different. But from going from mechanical engineering to a purely software field, you probably need three years of experience on top of your degree. Yeah. So we are only concerned about your education. Uh Virat is asking can a child 17 or 18 year old get H4 EAD? No. 
H for it is only for spouses. By the way, Virat cool name, man. <laughs> yeah. Virat. Asa lagta hai, you know. What would you a man of substance. To... Yeah, I don't. I don't. Uh, do you know the meaning? Means huge. Oh. Tremendous. He is not. He is not small stuff, dude. <laughs> What is this UD business? What is UD? <laughs> Yudhishthir. It comes from Yudhishthir. Really? <laughs> Okay, now that's the most mismatched name I have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Yudhishthir was one of the straightest, most honest people in the whole wide world, and he had a gambling. He had a gambling problem, by the way. <laughs> oh boy! Oh, so much fun. <laughs> Wish I could just do this for for my living. <laughs> Okay, uh, Rahul is uh, troubling me in the chat. He's been asking this forever. He's got an in tenth. He's got fifty five percent. Twelfth. He's got fifty six. Blah blah blah. He has three GPA of this much, but he got admission in NU, which is a reputed college. Will that result into F one rejection? <laughs> you know, if you have a good good, um, if you have a good university, you are going to. I think that that does help, and I'm not sure they really look at the grades. Again, what they look at, nobody knows. It's a mystery. Yeah. But, but when you're going to a good school, I think you have already met a certain amount of credibility test that a lot of people would have to. So, Rahul, go give it a shot. Just be honest. Don't try to play any games with them. Okay. Mm. Don't try to impress them like you do with the girls. That's not the same thing. Yeah. <clears throat> Did I ever tell you that I did ask the council officer who interviewed me if she wanted to go for a cup of coffee? Oh, really? No, very I didn't. Very good looking, <laughs> very good looking, very young person, very sweet. Wow, that is very bold. professional. She had already given me the visa, so I said, "Look, there's no conflict of interest now. Want to grab a cup of coffee?" And she said, "I don't think my husband would like that." That's <laughs> okay. Oh, when was this? How old? Oh, many was years that? ago. Okay. Many. I was twenty uh, seven. Okay. Okay. I was like, yeah, you you gave up on dating life now. So why are no, you? Now I and now I just do bhajan puja. <laughs> okay. Uh, next one was, can I do YouTube on F1 visa? Every time we answer <laughs> this question, <laughs> we don't think so. We prefer that you don't. These issues remain test. You know what? What would be nice, Yudi? When you have an issue that is coming up time and time and time time again. you can write to the irs and say look i have this problem can you give us an opinion and irs gives you an opinion uscis does not so so if if i are you saying like if i want to write an like question to irs saying that they'll hey, give you an opinion okay they issue opinions But all it, the time is it an immigration problem or it is an tax problem no so basically like i'll give you an example so people have been asking can i keep the the check that i've gotten because of the covid 19 and i said you know what this is a highly unsettled issue do this call the irs get them on the phone write down the name of the person you talked with write down what they told you and write down the date and time of the call and do, do what they say so irs will give you opinions uscis will not they'll all only give you bad opinions number one over the phone on top of that they will never give you a written opinion they should be given written opinion because these are issues that need to be settled what is the problem with doing a, doing youtube on the side I mean, yeah. how is we're not taking away an american job you are a creative person we we encourage your creativity we want you to come to the united states yeah you know yeah. but uh, but that's that's the system we live in yesterday no this morning uh, we were looking at a case of a school teacher who is here on a j1 visa and she's a very talented teacher a school is really really looking forward to having her work there but she has a 212e home residency requirement so they couldn't understand why does she have to go home for 2 years i said this started back in the cold war days so the problem is nobody has addressed this issue in 30 40 years so some of these laws are so old they are literally coming apart at the seams they just don't make sense anymore for example the law about not taking promotions when the green card is going on not the law but more or less the policy that's that's crazy it takes 16 years to get a green card you want me to be a systems analyst for 16 years 
<laughs> yeah. Maybe people do. <laughs> well, no, we have we have to redo the green card. So normally what we do is when we file the green card, we think 10 years ahead. Yeah. Say, okay. Today he's a systems analyst. In 10 years, what would he be? Systems manager. Okay. Let's file a green card for systems manager. Because it's a future job. Oh, I see. And is that only for employer based? Employer based. Okay. Yeah, because he did for my green card. They did ask me my my job role, and I said I promote. I got promoted, and and it's like, oh, we don't have that. Just like, just like three steps below God right now. So, <laughs> I can look up at the Almighty right there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Ah, such a good one hour. Now I'll be so happy in my calls at work. <laughs> <laughs> You should you should get you should get um, cartoon nose, cartoon hats. As long as you are on not on a Zoom call type of call, you can amuse yourself by uh, you yeah. discuss serious uh, things. Yeah, or just rewatch this whole podcast again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one is uh, when to apply for CSPA for F four petition file, and what are the major. First of all, you don't apply for CSPA per se. There are certain things, CSPA is Child Status Protection Act, which protects certain children from aging out by operation of law, certain defenses have been created. Mm. It works for both employment-based, family-based cases. So typically, let me take an example of employment-based cases, which is my forte. So you've got a child turning 21, the I-140 stayed pending for a year and a half, you will automatically get one and a half year deducted from his age. So mm. most of it is automatic. You don't really have to do much. However, there is a provision where if you are trying to go through consular processing, once the priority date becomes current and stays current, you've got to apply for the next step within one year. Mm. So there you have to do something. But all I can tell you is just be reasonably fast in whatever process is being being taken care of and you'll protect yourself as much as possible. Okay, next one is how will it look in terms of immigration if I do my master's in United States after an undergraduate in Canada? Why not? That's what I did. Mm, yeah. I have a master's degree from Canada, another master's from USA. Nothing wrong with that. He might become a lawyer. Did um, you do, did, did I, you do ma so you did masters and again masters in US? What I did was I did a program in legislative drafting, but I didn't write a thesis because I didn't want to become an academician. So I came, I did my diploma. I didn't I did not write my thesis, but then I did a program here in George Washington University, which was just a basically a glorified way to to qualify for the bar exam. So they called it Master of Comparative Laws. I had to take some courses in certain subjects, constitutional law, contract, torts, etc. Civil procedure, hmm. criminal procedure. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, lots of questions. I'm an H-1B holder working in United States. Uh, when I go for extension, stamping through Dropbox, uh, whether my newborn child is, whether my newborn child in India is allowed for, for Dropbox for H4? You'll have to ask them. I do not know the answer off the top of my head. I would say yes. Because remember, first of all, children under 14 don't have to be interviewed, right? So what is this Dropbox? It mainly is an interview waiver. Mm -hmm. A child is already waived, right? So my, my guess would be, and again, this is law, not common sense, but I would be surprised if they don't waive that interview. Mm. What are they going to interview? Goo Goo Gaga? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's Maybe just see if they really have a child. I don't know. <clears throat> no, it's not. Because it's so easy to prove through DNA. Uh, okay. I'm on an OPT, but I'm not getting any job. Can you please ask Rajiv G? What happens if I overstay? Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. First of all, 
no way you're not getting a job why because on opt you can even volunteer as long as it is in your own field and 20 hours each week you can even freelance as long as as, as long as you can keep time so don't give up uh, if you are not able to if you're in technology uh, send me an email to help at immigration.com i'll forward your resume to some people i know they're always looking for interns okay so they'll be able to accommodate you uh, for 20 hours at least work with them i don't know these guys but i know the association yeah. and they had volunteered also there's a students association who's also been helping students i forgot their name i'm on their board as well actually they also help so start floating your resume you can con- contact your college professor just say i'm and, willing and to I, do I, research for you and there are a lot of open source projects which uh, he can participate as well and just log 20 hours to that exactly so so it depends upon what you're doing but if you are a surgeon and you don't have opt i mean it's a different problem <laughs> i don't think we can get you a patient to work on at home <laughs> yeah okay uh next one is uh, i am no already done skipping the vaccine so many vaccine questions oh my god yeah guys go to cdc then you'll get really good information yeah <clears throat> center for disease control okay i got admit from queens college new york is it right choice uh, to go to bist okay uh, sorry i thought it was going to go to visa question that's easy. okay no it's okay for them to ask we yeah, yeah. we ask each other sometimes we know the answers most yeah. times we don't <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Okay, Virat is back. He's asking, uh, I'm applying for F1 visa with a community college at Delhi Consulate and I have age 4 valid until 31st August 2022. What approach do I take to justify my change and about school to get approved? That's very simple. The truth. Whatever the truth is. I don't care what the truth is. I don't care how ugly it looks for you. Tell the truth. Yeah. And by the way, Yuri, some names you have to pronounce correctly. Virat. Oh. <laughs> it should be like an echo. Wow, 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 wow. I, I don't think people call him like Virat. <laughs> I would. If he were my friend, I would always Every call time. him. Every yeah. time. Every oh, time. Yeah. I'll catch such a kick out of it. <laughs> I have no life. I get amused by these small things. <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny. Okay, I'm, I'm an MBA finance non-STEM student on F1 visa. Does working as a business analyst in finance or non-finance industry yeah. have an adverse impact on my OPT or later H1B approvals? See, you should discuss this with your school. They'll help you determine whether the the field is appropriate for your major. It sure looks okay to me from what you have described. Yeah, I mean... I, See, I, I could so. be working for a car dealership, but I could be working on their accounts or financial stuff. So even though the business is not in line with what I do, my work at that business is in line with what I right. do. Right. Yeah, it's it's your responsibility needs to be tied to your um, to your major. Yeah. Just like mm-hmm. Costco, you could be working in IT in Costco. Yeah. On it doesn't that. mean that you are sorting out mangoes. You know? Yeah. Okay, Vinay is asking, is the wait time for green card for CAP exempt H-1B research job at an academic institution same as via lottery for Indian national? The wait time. The wait time is about the same, yes. And by the way, Vinay, when you say Vinay, you should say it like this. <laughs> Vinay is hum- humility, right? <laughs> yes, I know him. <laughs> so <laughs> he's moving to uh, Fremont, California from Michigan. Are you moving people over? Are you running for office or something? <laughs> I want to. Yeah, that doesn't sound very good. My, I, I have a my uh, wife and mother-in-law thinks I'll I'll make a good mayor of uh, my city. I know you should do it. If you, if politics attracts you, you should do it. But I but I'm not a citizen. Can I run for it though? A local office doesn't require citizenship. Oh, okay. Just check on the local ordinance, the county ordinance or the city ordinance. Even even running for, if I remember correctly, even running for state, um, for for federal um, house, maybe even um, I don't know what the rules are, but citizenship is not required for everything. Maybe for for uh, Congress, you are required citizenship, but I know people 
who are members of state legislative assemblies with a green card hmm. yeah but i won't make as much money as i make right now so well, it's not about money it's about it's about the the improvement in the society but it's, yeah it's about the the light that shines behind your head oh the halo you wear i i don't want <laughs> i don't care care for the halo yeah just give me the cash you can keep the halo <laughs> yeah uh, okay next one is uh, i'm working on evc model Empro- employee vendor client um, yeah okay my employee filed for h1b for me but the vendor is not providing any documents for h1b processing nor client what to do now very difficult to predict how it's going to go maybe they will not ask but if they ask you have to be able to prove that you have an employer employee relationship type situation what kind of work you would be doing courts may not be very sympathetic if you're not able to prove even that much mm. we used to do that before before trump came into power we used to be able to prove by showing the work that you had already done your entry badge for the premises id cards etc we were able to use those to prove that you were working at this place mm. but it gotten it became tighter like to be to be fair it became tighter even before trump came in and under trump it became unreasonable before that it was it was still strict mm. and a little a little uncomfortable to ask those kind of documents we actually had to advise so many of our uh, primary end clients what kind of documentation to give because they were concerned see if you have a contract a master services agreement you are a big company you have a master services agreement you don't want to give anything in writing that could conflict with that mm-hmm. because that msa has been vetted by their legal by their outside counsel 30 lawyers have looked at it and if you write something up that has to be approved by the same 30 people yeah so yeah. what i suggested to our end clients was you begin by saying we are not creating abrogating or amending any rights in law or equity express or implied take a full disclaimer this letter can be used only in front of the uscis and nowhere else that should cover you yeah okay shubham <clears throat> is asking is there a way to pronounce his name shubham 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 that means everything <laughs> is good everything is good everything is good. <laughs> all right Auspicious. okay is that <laughs> <laughs> He's asking me and my wife are planning to come to USA in August. I'll be on F2 and she will be on F1. In January I want to convert to F1. Challenges we may face while getting our visa approved next month. Delay. The as delay far as in See, uh, when you are here converting to F1 would be delayed. But if you're talking about the challenge I don't even know why it would come up you want to convert to F1 if it does be honest about it say yes I want to go to school too I don't want my wife to be far more educated than I am little bit is okay <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> little bit is okay <clears throat> you see how he how he writes his email I and my wife he doesn't really know who's the boss right <laughs> I and my wife are going for visa <laughs> no, your wife is going, and you are going along with her. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. I don't want to create discord. <laughs> okay, my university starting on 17th August. Got F1 visa interview date on 23rd. How long after my program start date can I enter USA? 30 days before your start date. Does he want to know after? <laughs> you have to talk to your dso yeah if they are going to make an accommodation they should give you a letter yeah 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 <clears throat> and also with your professors and uh, all of i mean actually yes, the dso, DSO should be able to take care of that yeah. yeah okay and virat is asking again i mean if i <laughs> if i say that my father is not going to go back due to whatever travel ban then i'm scared that they will cancel my h4 and not give me a f1 obviously can't say i want opt <laughs> my father will not go back this is a new character in the movie <laughs> i yeah his father he's on h4 because his father is on h1 his father is on h1b oh i think he's worried about ties ties to india because if my family is living in usa 
what are my ties to india this is a well known issue and government has been making a com- accommodation for students mm, yeah. i know so many students who are exactly in this situation their parents are here on h1 h4 and they went and got their f1 done mm. okay i think this might be the last one can i work on h1 b visa at different locations states uh, for the same organization if the organization have multiple office no you need an lca well actually you need an h1 b amendment for every location so if you oh, have yeah. an office in california new york and dc and georgia um and let's say little rock arkansas the salary in san francisco for the same job could be 250000 in little rock arkansas it could be 25000 <laughs> so therefore they want to make sure that you are equitably paid if you you got approved for little rock arkansas they can't be paying you $25000 while you are in in first of all you will starve yeah. and second um it's it's just not the law you can't do that now if there is a company with multiple offices within normal commuting distance which is normally understood to be 50 miles you should be okay you still have to post lcas but you don't have to do an h1b amendment so it's complicated don't assume you know the answers get make sure your lawyers look at it mm. but uh, for green card it doesn't matter right we, wherever you can yeah see the way we do the green cards is uh, you did this happened i think a good 25 years ago when the economy started moving from manufacturing to services especially in the consulting industry you never have a job fixed at one location mm-hmm. you could be working today in pennsylvania and tomorrow in new york so what the department of labor did which was very smart they said look when you have transferable jobs we will think of them as located fictitiously by operation of law in the corporate headquarters mm. therefore if if i have a company i have so many uh, clients who have who have uh, employees moving all over we have one company here in alexandria doing excellent work very advanced work they have a client in iowa they've been working for the same client for 6 years but i made them redo the green card with the corporate headquarters mm. because i don't i don't like that inflexibility once i have it from alexandria we can move move him anywhere it's just bad planning to do it for the end client site where even though you've been working 6 years you could be moved tomorrow yeah and one more question on h1b so if that person who so let's say if uh, he was working in chico and went to florida but now he's working remote not any office what yeah. like then what happens they have to do a, an h1 before their home location oh so gotcha. today we had a client who was working from pennsylvania and client is in chicago and the company is in new york hmm. so they said well the salaries are are too high in chicago and that's not that was not budgeted uh, i said well you don't have to pay the new york salary if he's working from home you don't have to pay chicago or new york salaries now when the when the covid-19 situation goes away and he starts working from chicago at that point we'll do an amendment hmm okay got it got it okay cool all right i think that's it for this one thank you everybody for joining thank you rajiv ji it was so always much a pleasure guys yeah everybody stay well please don't uh, don't be careless that's all i can tell you it's not over yet <laughs> yeah yeah people yeah. are uh, is, is in your uh, washington is is it also same like california no more no more masks yeah <clears throat> we are not required to wear masks but if i'm getting into an elevator i always ask you guys are you okay with me coming in i am fully vaccinated most of my neighbors we know each other i've lived this in building for 30 years so most of us know each other and we trust each other so there are some people who may not like it so we always ask i think that's the polite thing to do okay yeah some people might even have unique susceptibilities so it's okay for us to be considerate of other people but um, there is really no no requirement of the law except in 711 when i go for coffee but that's a totally different country you see <laughs> yeah yes all right awesome cool thank you rajiv ji so you talk to you soon bye
Take care, guys, everybody. Bye, UD. Bye.